Hello, baseball fans. Chris Terrell here with RotorPros.com to bring my MLB DFS breakdown for Monday, August 12th. We've got an eight-game slate tonight. We're, that's what we're kind of going to concentrate on for the most part is those eight games on the main slate. We do have um, a doubleheader today, Baltimore at New York. They've got a makeup game. That game uh, game one starts at 1 5 p.m. Eastern. And if you're looking to show down um, slates for that. Something I'm looking at kind of as a core would be James Paxton pitching. He's got that high K upside going up against Baltimore. Um, they're minus 340 favorites. The Yankees are sitting right around 7.3 implied runs. we got the Orioles at about 3.6 right now. For bats, you can definitely fit Paxton in. Um, you can usually get like a big bat with Paxton and then some, some cheaper end bats like Cameron Maven, Mike Ford, um, Brayback Valera are hitting 7, 8, and 9. They're all very cheap, so if you want to get one or two of those guys, I got no problem targeting those those value guys just because the Yankees um, have a very potent offense for one. Um, it works with sort of like a wraparound stack if you wanted to go 7, 8, 9, 1 with Gardner in the leadoff spot. That gets you some value to help get to uh, James Paxton. And as we know with Baltimore, uh, their bullpen has been absolutely taxed lately going back to the last series with the Yankees, and then even with Houston got used up a lot. They're already the worst uh, pitching staff plus bullpen in the league. Now they're extra taxed, and they got a doubleheader today. So definitely looking at Yankees bats um, for core, not only for the showdown slate early, but we'll also talk about them when we get into the main slate as well. If you want to go on the Baltimore side, James Paxson hasn't been having his greatest year. We know we've seen him blow up at times, um, quite a few times so far this year. So if you're looking to maybe be a little bit contrarian on the showdown slate, the four bats that I'm mainly looking at for Baltimore, who are the best um, against left-handed pitching, you got Hanser Alberto sitting there very cheap at the leadoff position. you got Trey Mancini um, in the two spot, Renato Nunez in the four spot, and then Pedro Severino down in the six spot. Those four guys are the best bats for Baltimore. More um, against left-handed pitching, so those are the ones I'm, I'm pretty much going to be concentrating on for my contrarian showdown stacks here. If you have any questions about the showdown slate, um, anything to do with matchups, how guys have been doing lately, um, hitter versus pitch type, that sort of thing, definitely hit me up in the Rotor Pros Slack chat. And that just kind of transitions us right into if you're not a Rotor Pros member, make sure to get over to rotopros.com. Get your free trial right now. Uh, we've got free trials for our weekly, monthly, and yearly subscriptions. Um, get some premium articles in there. You get the pre-locked live shows, stuff like that. Um, the biggest thing that we do offer with Roto Pros is our one-on-one -on -one coaching through our Slack chat. I've um, got a lot of private messages and talking to 5, 10, 15 people, depending on the day and the sport that's going on, how big the slate is. Just talking not just which players to pick matchups, but also looking at strategy things like... Uh, stacking in multi-entry, how to build a core, um, bankroll management, contest selection, GPP versus cash games, that sort of thing. So definitely get over to rotopros.com, check us out today, get that free trial. Um, and also if you use promo code MLB today, you'll get 50% off your first payment after the trial period is over. And if you're signing up for a yearly membership, that's big savings. Um, so get over to rotopros.com, check us out today. Pretty sure you're going to like uh, what we have to offer and stick around with us uh, for the long haul. So talking about the eight games tonight, we're going to jump in. And what we're going to do is we're going to talk about some of the pitchers. Um, there is a weather concern. We'll discuss that a little bit as well. And then I'll just jump over and quickly go over some of the teams that I'm targeting for stacks. Um, so with that, let's just jump right in and share the screen here and kick things off. So first of all, we've got weather concerns <clears throat> Excuse me, in um, Chicago tonight. And unfortunately, that takes us to our, well, my number one pitcher on the slate. We haven't seen <clears throat> who's going to be pitching for Baltimore, New York yet. So that's why the model hasn't updated for the rankings. But I would almost guarantee that Zach Greinke is going to be number one in that model. Unfortunately for me, he's going to be GPP only. That's something we're going to have to pay attention to tonight because there is 70 to 90 percent chance of rain throughout the game. Um, there's a very high chance of postpone. Um, very, very risky, even if it does play when it comes to pitching. But if somehow the rain goes away, he's definitely going to be my top uh, pitcher. He struggled a little bit since coming over to Houston in the trade there at the deadline. But he, he's a very strong pitcher. Um, like his first start, he gave up five runs to Colorado. Colorado was kind of struggling. He only had two strikeouts in that time. But 
he does have that 23% K rate. He doesn't really walk anyone. He's got a low ERA. He's got a low whip, um, both lowest on the slate. Chicago's really struggled against righties, 81 WRC+. plus. 26% K rate, and then last seven days they've struggled as well, especially in the power department. Um, last 14 days they've struggled even more when looking at that WRC plus, 28% K rate. So I'll definitely be looking at Grinky <clears throat> if he is, you know, available and the weather's going to be okay for that game. Next up in price on DraftKings, we've got Eduardo Rodriguez. I'm, he's not really in my player pool yet. I'm considering it, but... Cleveland has been a lot better lately. Um, now I say a lot better. They're only 88 WRC plus 93 over the last 14 days. They don't strike out like 20% strikeout rate against left-handed pitching. Kind of concerning there, even though it's a 90 WRC plus 10% less than league average. But for me, um, <clears throat> I'm turning. He's given up two, four, three earned runs over his last three starts. I was against Kansas City and the Yankees twice. Um, only one strikeout in his last start. So he's been very up and down. So I would be more inclined to use him uh, for GPP, especially when considering cash games and considering FanDuel. If you're playing a lot of FanDuel, um, I'm definitely going to be turning to Joey Lachese here. Uh, eight and a half game total. So two runs lower on that over under when comparing the Boston Cleveland versus San Diego Tampa. He's only $7,600 on FanDuel. So I really like the price. Minus 140 favorite. And just looking at, um, you know, 23% K rate, 11% swing and strike rate. So right around that league average, nothing that really stands out there. A lot of ground balls, 48% ground ball, which is really nice to see. Um, he's coming off a good start versus Seattle. Um, he kind of got blown up against uh, the Cubs and the Dodgers in two of his last four starts, six and four earned runs respectively. But he bounced back um, after the Chicago start at home against San Francisco. He went six innings, only allowed two hits with one earned run and eight strikeouts. And then after getting blown up um, in Los Angeles against the Dodgers, he rebounded in Seattle in his next start, going five and a third, only giving up five hits, two earned runs with eight strikeouts again. Um, so he has responded. He's been very. He's been a lot better against, I guess you could say, weaker competition. Not that I'm considering Tampa a weaker competition by any means. They are up there, you know, in like in the wild card race. They're fighting the Yankees for the. AL East, but what stands out to me with Tampa when I say weaker competition is that they strike out their only league average WRC plus against left-handed pitching, 26% K rate. So there's a lot of upside there at only 7,600 on FanDuel. I definitely like that. And then Tampa Bay has also been struggling just most recently, like the last 14 days, they're 118 WRC plus, but over the last seven days, they've dropped down to 70, 144 ISO. They're not striking out a ton in the last seven days overall. I didn't go back and check to see how many lefties versus righties they've faced um, in that time, but I do like seeing that they do K 26% against lefties for the season. So I will turn to Lechizzi as my top pitcher on FanDuel tonight for cash games, provided Grinky um, is in a weather game, which it looks like that's going to be the case. And then some other GPP options um, at the top that stand out. I do like Desclafani's 25% uh, K rate, which leads the slate here. Only a 7% walk rate. Does give up some fly balls. Um, does give up a little bit of hard contact. He's approaching that 40% hard contact. He's facing Washington, who will get into stacks. I'm actually looking at Washington lefties because Desclafani, he really struggles against lefties. Some big splits there. But if you want to go GPP, he does have that K upside <clears throat> tonight. Um, he should be low owned as well. And then look, going back to that Cleveland-Boston matchup, I almost like Zach Plesak a little bit more from a G GPP standpoint. He's obviously cheaper than, than Erod. Um, not much on FanDuel, but you get a little bit of a discount with him there. He's actually been um, very good. He's coming off a, a start in, uh, against Texas, five hits, seven strikeouts, zero earned runs. Kind of got blown up against Houston before that. A lot of teams have lately. Houston's got the best offense in baseball. So I start looking a little bit further um, at Kansas City, seven innings, zero earned runs. Versus Kansas City, six innings, four hits, two earned runs. Um, versus Detroit before that, only three innings. I'm not exactly sure why they pulled him early because he only he was giving up zero hits there. Not sure if that was one that got rained out or what. But um, at Kansas City before that, um, only two earned runs. So... 
he has been decent. Um, the strikeouts are kind of concerning, but seeing him have uh, six plus in two of his last four starts, so kind of like that strikeout per inning, I'm definitely looking at that. Boston has been red hot, so he's going to be another very low-owned option. The options are very slim on this eight-game slate, especially considering, like I said, with the weather, pushing Zach Grinke kind of out of our player pools because that's got a high postponed chance there tonight. So we're kind of going to at the – I'm probably going to go a little bit lighter because of that on the GPP side of things, but it does open up some opportunities for some lower-owned guys. Uh, you're just going to have to uh, saddle up because you're going to feel a little bit uncomfortable about your pitching in your line, especially on DraftKings where you have to fit two of these guys tonight. Mitch Keller, someone I'm looking at, again, from a GPP standpoint, a uh, little bit of a value. He was he's a second-round pick, so he was expected to do good things. He's a high prospect in their system. 19 starts in the minors. He had a 3.56 ERA, 3.9 xFIP. Uh, AAA last year in 10 starts, 4.82 ERA, 3.95 xFIP. So he's consistently keeping that xFIP below 4 in AAA, which is good to see. He's brought his K rate up from 9.8 per 9 last year in AAA to 10.7 this year, and that's almost double the start, so it's really good to see that he's got that K upside up there. Um, struggled a little bit in his major league debuts. Six earned runs in each of his first two starts. That was at Cincinnati and at Atlanta. Two pretty good hitters parks there. But it was really good to see that he rebounded against Detroit. I mean, it's it's a weaker offense, but um, they're a major league team, and he's a young pitcher. <clears throat> I would say Detroit's arguably better than the AAA team. Um, so he had five hits, four, sorry, five innings, four hits, gave up two earned runs, but he had six strikeouts in those five innings, so he is showing that K upside there. He's cheap on both sites. I, I mean, on DraftKings, you're going to need to get 16, 17, 18 points somewhere in there from him, um, which isn't, I don't think that's, he is a little bit overpriced given that he's had two out of three very bad starts, but is also relative to the slate size. Um, so I'm definitely looking at him. It is a higher total. He is a dog here against L.A., but like I said, he's got that K upside, and L.A. is actually going through one of their worst offensive times of the season right now. You look at their numbers over the last seven, last 14 days, they're below 80 on the WRC+. Plus. Their K rate is through the roof, and their team, as you can see here for the season, only strikes out 19% of the time overall. They've struck, struck out 27% of the time the last 14 days, 29% of the time over the last seven days, so this may be an opportunity to jump on board and attack the Angels right now. Um, so I'll definitely be looking at Mitch Keller. And then finally, uh, I do like, this is a weird one because I will be using some Toronto and GPP's Toronto bats, but I also like uh, the young Gerardo here as well. He's been solid. He's held opponents to three or fewer earned runs in three straight. Um, he, he has had some blow-up starts, which all these young pitchers are going to have. These starts where they give up four, five, six in a run, especially with offense being at a premium this year, uh, going to be setting records with home runs and stuff. So we're going to see that with young pitchers. They're going to have some of these uh, ups and downs. But again, Gerardo is someone who is cheap enough. You only need about 14, 15 points on DraftKings. You only 6,300 on FanDuel. So we can really fit all the bats if you want to pick one of these lower-end guys. Um, because of the K rate, I'm probably looking at Keller on FanDuel a little bit more if I'm going to um, go with an all-bats approach type thing, value pitching all-bats approach uh, versus Gerardo. But on DraftKings for a starting pitcher too, I'm probably going to risk it and take the discount with Gerardo here. Um he said he doesn't have the greatest K rate, but Toronto t K's a ton, obviously. 25% against righties, 30% over the last seven days overall. So that's the way I'm looking at pitching. Um, going to have to pay attention to the weather in Chicago to see what we can do with Grinky. But other than that, Lachizzi is my number one, uh, followed by Plesak, who would be a GPP play. Maybe a little bit of uh, Erod in there, um, Desclafani. But uh, Lachizzi definitely stands out as my number one pitcher up here at the top. And then for cheap guys, I'm looking at uh, Mitch Keller and Gerardo there. All right, so what we're going to do now is we're going to jump in and just look at a couple stacks that stand out. Again, we don't know who the pitchers are for Baltimore and New York. New York leads the way to 7.4 implied runs tonight. Um, that's not an updated, uh, complete odds. They don't, some places, I'm just kind of piecing together the odds, I guess. So it could be somewhere around there. I wouldn't be surprised if they are number one on the slate just because of the situation like we talked about uh, with Baltimore bullpen. 
Um, obviously, their starting staff is one of the worst in the league, and then you add in that their bullpen is the worst in the league, and then you add in that their bullpen is also taxed. Um, they've been used a ton lately. Starters not going deep. They've been getting just pummeled by Houston, the Yankees before this. So there, there's a reason why the Yankees probably are going to sit above Colorado and Arizona, who are playing in Coors Field, in implied runs tonight, and it makes sense to get as many Yankees as you can in your lineup. Like I said before, and like we've talked about in the past, Yankees are a team who we can target top to bottom. Um, I like using wraparound stacks with them getting some, like I said, when the show for the showdown slate, like going seven, eight, nine, one, or eight, nine, one, two, gives you uh, the cheap guys at the bottom, helps you to still get some expensive pitching in in there. But tonight we may not need that if you're going with a cheap pitcher. So I'd definitely be looking at like uh, you know Judge Gregorius, Torres, Sanchez, the big bats in the lineup. Um, but again, if you're going, if you're going to fit Grinky in or you're going to fit uh, Lachesi in um, with another mid-range pitcher or something, definitely like going with wraparound stacks with the Yankees, so pay attention there. Um, definitely be running probably some 8 9 one twos myself um, in the Yankee lineup to get that Lachesi in there as my top pitcher. After that, we do have that game at Coors, Colorado and Arizona. you got Merrill Kelly going up against Peter Lambert. Love this matchup. This could be one of the highest scoring games. This could be one of those games where we see 13 um, runs, you know, for each team. Uh, it, it's happened before. Colorado's been a smash spot this year. It's a great hitting environment. We already know that. It's a little bit higher than it was before, obviously, and there's a good gap between them and the next team. And then we start going and looking at Kelly versus Lambert. Kelly has given up 17 earned runs over his last three starts with six home runs. So very troubling there lately. And that is against versus Baltimore at Miami versus Philly. Three well below average offenses, two of them Baltimore and Miami near the bottom of the league. Very troubling now that he goes into, um, you know, the best hitting environment in the league facing Colorado, who's maybe starting to pick it up here a little bit. Um, you know, they're jumping up, getting close to, um, that 100 WRC plus over the last seven days, but obviously they are way better at home, especially when it comes to power, almost 100 points higher on the ISO when they are at home. Kelly is struggling, gives up a ton of hard contact. The exit velocity at 90 mile an hour, 40 mile an hour, or 40% hard contact. His X or his X wob was higher than the wob, the X slugs higher than the slugs. So there's a lot of troubling things when looking at Kelly. So I think his struggles continue. Definitely be looking at a lot of Colorado bats tonight. And something I just kind of made some mock lineups last night when I was doing research with this Colorado, you know, some of their projected lineup and stuff. And I do like the value um, tonight, especially on FanDuel. When we're, uh, it works on DraftKings as well, but on, on FanDuel especially. Some of the value that's out there for these Colorado bats if they're in the lineup. Like you got uh, Jonathan Daza, um, 2,600 on FanDuel. Um, Ramel Tapia, 3,100 on FanDuel. You got Ryan McMahon, 3,200 on FanDuel at second base. And he is going to be hitting like likely right behind Aaron Otto in the five spot. So putting those three guys together gives you that exposure to the Coors game, gets exposure to the Rockies but doesn't force you to all of a sudden go down and punt three or four other spots in your lineup. If I'm going to punt, I'm going to, you know, I don't want to say punt because these guys aren't mid price by any means, but if I'm going to be going with value guys, I want to attack the value guys on teams who are projected to score lots of runs, not just because they're cheap um, one-offs. Um, I will be looking towards that. And that is one thing that stood out to me tonight is, is those three guys at the bottom of the lineup. Even Daniel Murphy's only 3,400 on FanDuel and he's projected to hit third today. Uh, that's kind of a sandwich between Story and Arenado. So there's a lot of ways you can go with Colorado, a lot like the Yankees. You don't just need to target the, the very expensive bats. You can get exposure to this uh, total of 14 in this game um, in a very cheap value way as well. So then on the other side, you got Peter Lambert. Um, he's also struggled lately. He's given up 13 over earned runs, uh, three home runs over his last two starts. He's walked seven. Um, he's pushing that whip way up there, which I do like to see. Um, on the whip side of things, just because he's got a 1.6 whip for the season. That just means he's given up a lot of hits and a lot of walks and given teams a lot of opportunities. And you do that in Coors Field, you're more than likely going to get hammered on. Um, so I do like the Arizona side of things here as well. Like he's got a 687 ERA. Uh, it's the, the, the XFIP is a little over two runs lower, but I said, like I said, that whip is at 1.6 is very troubling. 
He doesn't give up a ton of fly balls, but when they go in the air, 24% of the time, they are going over the wall. Um, and a lot of that has to do with 89 mile an hour exit velocity and 43% hard contact. That's one of the highest in the league. Yes, there is some regression coming for him, as we can tell with the XFIP, as well as the XWOBA and the X Slug here. Um, but I don't think a lot of that regression to the mean in a positive way is coming for him tonight uh, against Arizona at home in Colorado. He's really struggled at home in Colorado. He's been a lot better. If we go over and just look at his home road splits here real quick. Yeah, not a whole bunch actually, but the XFIP 391 on the road, 528 at home in Coors. And then even with the whip, um, pretty bad on both. Home runs per nine jumps way up at home, obviously. It's Coors Field, so that can be expected. So I'm, I just absolutely love this matchup. I think we want to get as much exposure as we can on the Arizona things. Obviously, Kettle Marte is going to be my top guy tonight. Escobar, um, more of a GPP play for me looking at his splits. Um, they're also a little bit more expensive. So like I said, I do like going a little bit more with Colorado. I will consider Jared Dyson. Uh, Gerard Dyson, sorry, uh, leading off at 3,200 on FanDuel. That makes a lot of sense. Uh, very cheap there as well. David Peralta is under 4K, so is Christian Walker. Jake Lamb's only 3,100. That makes a nice GPP play um, against Lambert. And something else I wanted to look at with Lambert's splits. Where's lefties and righties? He's given up a 362 Woba to righties, a 408 Woba to lefties. Um, six home runs to lefties, seven to righties. Obviously, the sample size is a little bit smaller for lefties. So the home run per nine is a little bit higher when it comes against lefties. 486 XFIP against lefties. So definitely looking a little bit more to the lefties. So um, that takes me back to Dyson, Escobar, um, Marte, Peralta, Jake Lamb. So it looks like they can fit four or five lefties in that Arizona lineup tonight, which could be trouble for Lambert. I, I just absolutely love this game. I'm getting as much exposure as I can in cash games and GPPs. Now, with that said, that is likely going to bring some lower ownership to teams like Houston, um, who's been red hot. we got the weather there, so we're going to have to pay attention to that. I'm not going to get too deep into that game because I think there is a high chance of postpone. But if it does look like it's only going to be a few small delays come game time, they're going to be super low on because people will not only avoid because of weather, but they will avoid because New York, Colorado, and Arizona are also in smash spots tonight. So keep that in mind. St keep your ear uh, close to the ground when it comes to uh, our Slack chat. Stay in there. We'll be discussing that weather as we get close to lock and see how we're going to actually play this out uh, later in the day. I also like Toronto like I talked about against Toronto. He's had some struggles. He's given up 42% hard contact. Toronto strikes out a lot, so that's kind of why I like Toronto. Um, side of things as like uh, like I said like an SP2 on DraftKings kind of obviously there's some risk there tonight but the price was low enough on the other side of things I will have some Toronto and GPP with their bats as well they have been a lot better as of late the young core has really started to come together with Biggio, um, Bichette, Guerrero, Gurriel he's on the DL now um, Talese is probably going to make his way back he's been absolutely crushing the minors um, so he's not there tonight, obviously, but uh, this young core is really starting to come around for Toronto. As you can see, over the last two weeks, they performed very well. Kind of dipped down a little bit over the last seven days, but mainly who I'm looking at here, um, Guerrero, he, he's been hit right. He's way better than lefty, so I'm looking at him. Uh, Bichette, Biggio, Guerrero, likely one, two, three in the lineup. Um, that's probably where I would go for my stack. Um, you can either add Gritchick Smoke after that. I do like Derek Fisher or... Um, Freddie Galvis has, has cheap guys in there as well. If you want to target that, look for some value for Toronto. And then the other one that stands out, I talked about Washington. I think they're going to be low owned tonight. I think a lot of people will use Des Clefini just because of uh, that, you know, that high strikeout rate that we've seen. He has given up a lot of fly balls, though, 41% fly balls. 17% uh, home run to fly ball rate, also concerning. So that's kind of why I go against Washington. And then when you start breaking down um, his splits here, it's the lefties that I'm going to be targeting tonight. Just bring up those splits here real quick. Yeah, so he's got he's given up only a 261 Woba to righties, um, 373 slugging percentage, very very low. So he's been he's been tremendous against righties. He shut them down. That's where most of his strikeouts have also come from. Um, his K rate, actually K rate's almost exactly the same. 26.6% K rate to righties, 23% to lefties. But what's concerning against the lefties is he's given up a 378 Woba, 
which is over, it's about 117 points higher than against righties, 549 slugging percentage, 14 of his 22 home runs have come against lefties, that's a 2.32 home runs per nine rate, 1.21 to righties. So he's just had so much trouble with lefties. Washington is another team that they can really get all the lefties out there. So I'm looking at Adam Eaton. He's been red hot, uh, hitting second in the lineup behind Trey Turner. Trey Turner is one I'll look at. If you're stacking Washington, I will get them in. But if you're looking for just left-handed one-offs, I'm looking at uh, Adam Eaton. Matt Adams, who could be hitting cleanup spot, five spot again tonight. Very cheap, nice value there. And then uh, Gerardo Parra is a min price punt play. If he gets back in the lineup, that would be on FanDuel. He's also cheap on DraftKings. And then if you're completing the Washington stack, I would get Trey Turner and Rendon in there for sure as your high priced ones with Eaton and Adams in there. That could be your one, two, three, four. You get two value bats, two lefties, and then two high producing right handed bats in there as well. And Rendon has been like elite versus righties and lefties. He's been one of the best players in the league year after year, looking at WRC plus OPS, pretty much all the numbers. So definitely like a Washington stack tonight as well. So that covers kind of my top stacks. I talked about four of my core teams that I'm going to be looking at targeting tonight. I looked at a couple of GPP stacks. We've got some weather to pay attention to. So it's going to be very important to pay attention to our members chat as we get closer to lock tonight, as lineups start coming out, as the weather um, kind of becomes more clear what's going to happen, and we'll decide which way we're going to go. Once again, if you're not a Rotor Pros member, get over to rotorpros.com, get your free trial, um, come in, check out what we're, what we're all about. And if you use promo code MLB, get 50% off your first purchase after the trial. Thanks for watching the video. Make sure to like and subscribe. Helps us out a ton. And set your notifications as we've got a bunch more videos coming down the line. We've got PGA this week. We've got uh, the BMW Championships, the final 70 players left trying to get to that final 30 for the Tour Championship. And then we've got... Uh, NASCAR this weekend. We're heading to Bristol. It's a Saturday night race, so things are kind of condensed a little bit on Friday. But while I will have a, um, a video out probably Saturday afternoon. It uh, will be my live video looking at things. I'll have a preview video out on Friday just looking at Bristol and what we're going to want to look at for fantasy. A lot going on at rotopros.com. Make sure to sign up today. Thanks a lot. Let's go get some green screens, everyone. Good luck tonight.